Ah, it's summer. And it's time to relax and enjoy the world's most popular recreational activity. Fishing. What'd you catch her on? My earring. A sport as challenging as it is exciting. Try this for bait. Oh, yes, it's blood hook. And fishing was never like this. Blood Hook casts you into the heart of the world's famous musky madness fishing contest. It's him! It's him! He's doing it! It's various contestants. We're all like time bombs waiting to go off! Boom! And the one fisherman who's the most unique fisherman of them all. <laughs> the master fisherman. <laughs> this master caster will teach you all the angles. He'll reveal his prize-winning methods for selecting and preparing his own bait. Yes, fellow anglers, this is your chance to learn the art of planting your hook and riding in your catch. So come on down and join the master at this most delightful pastime. Blood hook. Where the catch of the day is you. Bloodhook is filled to the gills with a talented cast of young new stars. It is lavishly produced by David Herbert and expertly directed by James Mallon. See Bloodhook and learn all the tricks for catching even the most elusive species. And more. So pack up your gear and get ready for a most unusual fishing expedition. Bloodhook. You can't worm your way out of this one. See Bloodhook. Fishing was never like this. Fishing is rude! Sheba, baby. Sheba, baby. Sheba, baby. Pam Greer, that foxy brown coffee gal, is Sheba, baby. I'm gonna take a shower. Meet the queen of the private eyes, pulling the teeth of a blood-sucking loan shark by land. Sea and air. Before I turn you in, you tell me about your operation. And you better tell me fast, before you lose your head. When you're after the top banana, you peel off the skin. Wait, what you gonna do with that gun, mama? Nothing if you roll down that window. Oh, what? I said roll down that window before I blast a hole in your head. Flamin' Pam, giving the gun brothers the frizzies and their boss man, the tizzies. Have I bruised your masculinity? You're sexy. How'd I take you? Try me. It's her! Sorry to interrupt your little party, but you and I have something to settle. The heat's on in the street for that big bad mama, but she's doing the cooking. <laughs> and any cat in her way is gonna get fried. Sheba baby, the kind of baby every swinger likes to hold. From another galaxy, from another world, comes the embodiment of fear. What the hell was that? Night Beast, terror from beyond. from a distant planet. A killing machine with a taste for human flesh. 
community abandoned in a code of silence. Wicker never even called the state. They don't even know we have a bad situation here. <laughs> A love affair. You know, you're a very attractive girl, Lisa. Two people brought together by the urgency of the moment. <sighs> Two people torn apart by the savage fury of Night Beast. I'm sorry, Jamie. There was nothing that could be done. The most vicious creature to ever span the intergalactic void has come to pay its respects. This is the story of how the little people answer the big questions. See the movie that will change the face of modern science fiction cinema. Night Beast, terror from beyond.
You have completed decompression phase four. You may now remove your helmets, disposable backpacks, air sacs, and cowlings. Controlled environment has now been stabilized. So what do we find out there? I don't really care, man. I'll get a damn good bonus for this thing. I'm sure we will when they find out what was in that rock. Damn, I'm thirsty. So what do you think, Doc? I don't know, you guys. Looks like another rock to me. Well, Doc, see the way I see this. This little probe here is makes a hell of a lot of money. See, according to this rock scanner, this thing is full of electronic circuitry. Ain't that something? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something else, Doctor. We're the first guys to play football on Mars ever. Every time you guys bring something back to me, you think it's something special. Your scanner's probably busted. Excuse me, gentlemen. The captain's a little disturbed about you taking so long. All right. We'll check this out later. Doc, uh, make sure the Major knows it found this thing. Oxygen at critical level. Please use nearest emergency oxygen supply until normal level is reduced. Use nearest emergency oxygen supply until normal level is restored. Warning. Oxygen at critical level. Please use nearest emergency oxygen supply until normal level is restored. Warning. Oxygen at critical level. Please use nearest emergency oxygen supply until normal level is restored. Warning. Oxygen at critical level. Please use nearest emergency oxygen Please use nearest emergency oxygen supply until normal level is restored.
Mitchell, please call engineering. Lieutenant Mitchell, please call engineering. We already checked that out. It's good to have you back, Colonel. How are things back on Earth? Better than they are here, I understand. Yes, we have had our problems. Colonel Lindsay. Have Lieutenant you found Clark, out what happened on SC-37 yet? Um, not yet, Colonel sir, Lindsay. but we have our Lieutenant best computer Clark. expert working report. on it right now. So Freeze comes running down the stairs, okay? And big crowds form around the dead guy. One of the crowd says, the priest says, uh, does anybody here know this guy? And the priest goes, no, but his face rings a bell. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's pretty funny. Oh, hey, did you see the beautiful blonde with the colonel today? Yeah, I saw her. So what? Hey, listen, man, come on, she was nice. Hand me the spattering rod, will you? Would you hurry up with that thing, man? The court's reserved for 1,400 hours. Hang on, buddy, I'm almost done. I'm hooking up the APU. What's the APU? The auxiliary power unit. We civilians, unlike you military personnel, do it right the first time. Man, if I didn't know you better, I'd be a little worried about you. You spend too much time with those computers. You heard about what happened on this ship, didn't you? Yeah, I heard. They found it floating in space with a permanent checked out crew. Suffocation. Crazy bastard. Probably forgot to turn on the auto stabilizer before they went to sleep. You know, you never hear about this stuff back on Earth. Just never hear about it. And for sure you never hear about it in the telepapers. Hey, is my battery run over there? Oh, never mind, here it is. I think those guys have been so stupid. That's what happens to you, man, when you've been out here too long. Your mind starts to go. They hushed it up real fast. I'm surprised you heard about it. Are you kidding me, man? When you've been in security as long as I have, you hear about everything. I could tell you some stories that... I found the problem. Problem? You're the problem, man. We're losing valuable court time. Gentlemen, shall we begin? Colonel. Our company cannot take the responsibility for the incompetence of Major Porter's men. My men have nothing to do with cracks being found in four out of the five outtake valves. The valves have been replaced. And twice last week, Two second stage alerts? You know damn well, Porter. They we corrected any problem before any real danger occurred. Any real danger? What about Colonel, the damage to the inner line of the You should floor? check the files on Generator 4. Don't any real danger. No. Marlies. Damn you. This is a delicate operation. You want to screw up four hours worth of work? I was getting a little too intense in here for me. I'll wait for you on the court. There, I got it. What the hell did you do? I didn't do anything.
Rebels 4 on. Second. What's going on out there? A wall cutting through the hundreds of people are trapped out there. What's going on? What's happening? Total seven alert. Total seven alert. Attention all personnel. This is not a drill. Please report to your assigned emergency. Sir, it's a fire. Not Reactor drill. 4. Please report. Hey, is there anybody up there? This is Roger Campbell. Who's there? Lieutenant Lynn. I'm in the engine room. What's going on here? Do you know? No. But Campbell, you better get us the hell out of here. Code 7 means you only have a few more seconds until we're all reduced to carbon molecules. Get ready to give me full power, Billy. We're all gonna die! We're all gonna die! Come on. No. You can take care of this for me, will you? You think you can fight this thing, buddy? I'm gonna give it a hell of a try. Billy, are you okay? Billy. Yeah, I'm okay. Billy, come on up here. Billy, did you hear me? Yeah, I heard you. I'll be up in a minute. Like it or not, we're all in this together. Now, if we're gonna make it, we're gonna have to work as a team. Well, where are we gonna go? There's not enough food to last over a few months. I'm sure they'll send up a search party, but even a starship will take over a year to get here. The way I see it, there's only one thing we can do. According to the computer, there are two emergency supply depots between here and Earth. They should give us enough food and supplies to make the two-year trip. Provided they're not too far apart. Well, why will it take so long to get home? Because this is a shuttle craft, not a long-range spacecraft. The way I see it is that each one of us is going to have to handle certain duties. Now, obviously, Lieutenant Lynn can operate and maintain the shuttle's power plant. Dr. Kimberly, you'll be in charge of the food and water supplies throughout the trip. Sherry. I believe you worked in the kitchen aboard the L5 base? Yeah. Well, if you don't mind, you'll be in charge of preparing the meals. Okay. Now, we can all pitch in for cleanup. Roger, you'll be in charge of operating the shuttle. And I'll help Roger and fill in wherever needed. Well, as I understand it, Roger Campbell is not a pilot. 
You're an engineer, aren't you, Mr. Campbell? Computers are my specialty. Since you're not a pilot, how do you intend to fly this ship back to Earth? In case you didn't notice, you don't fly these things with a steering wheel. They're run by computers. And if you can find somebody else more qualified, I'd be more than happy to step down. Will we really be able to make it back to Earth on a ship this small? I can answer that. As I said before, this is a shuttle craft. It's not designed for long-range travel or re-entry. However, if I modify the propulsion system, we should be able to get enough power to slow her down for re-entry. If not, we'll all be dead before we know it anyway. So, barring any unforeseen meteor storm, I'd say we've got a 60-40 chance. And that's a whole lot better than they had back on L5. Well, we have a lot of work ahead of us, so let's get going. Oh, yeah. There's one more thing. One of us has got to make the final decision for all of us. I suggest Roger, since he's flying the ship. Shall we take a vote? All those in favor, raise your hands. Three out of five. Majority rules, and it's settled. You got it. Oh, Sherry. Yes? You're not the one who made those chicken pot pies, are you? No, that was Bob. I can't tell you how much better that makes me feel. Boy, you're really too much. I can't help it, man. It's in my blood. Looks like you're gonna have to settle for Billy. Adrian hates your guts, and Sherry's in love with me. I figured out the computer command code. I asked it to plot our course. Let's see how it's done. Have completed computations on course to follow. How long will it take? With a maximum stopover at each supply depot of 24 hours and a maximum flight speed of 52,000 miles per hour, it will take 18 months and three days and 14 hours. Where do we fuel up for the trip? The nearest supply depot is Alpha 7, 120 hours from this point. What kind of food's on Alpha 7? She won't answer you. Why not? She's only programmed for my voice. Racist. No, she just has good taste. What kind of food on Alpha 7, Bernice? Bernice? Steinberg program. Alpha 7 has K-20 survival food. K-20? Man, that stuff's the worst. I'd rather eat my shoe. K-20 is a perfect balance of proteins, carbohydrates, amino acids, and vitamins. Still tastes like dog shit. Bernice, proceed to Alpha 7. I cannot do that. Why not? The main propulsion system is still down. Lieutenant Lynn, this is Roger. I'm going to need full power. Campbell, if you don't leave me alone, I'm never going to be able to finish this damn thing. Whoever maintained the shuttlecraft didn't know their ass from their elbow. I ain't going to give you the time of day until this ship is running right. I think she likes you. How long till she's ready, Billy? I can't get the main fusion reactor activated. And stop that Billy crap! It's Lieutenant Lynn. Now I know she likes you. Let me know when you're ready, Lieutenant. 
You'll be the first to know, Captain. I don't need this. Is there anything else you want me to do, Captain? Yeah, do you give charm lessons? Charm lessons, Captain? Roger Campbell, your friendly host for this trip. And I look. Save it, Campbell. Sherry's not here. What do you want? I'm not cut out for this gal. I can't do it. You're doing okay, buddy. Look, Adrian, we're all still in a little shock over what's just happened. I'm just trying to lighten things up a little. Well, keep your humor to yourself, Campbell. And it's Dr. Kimberly to you. Yeah, well, Doctor, if you don't mind, if you're I'd like to have a progress report on the food and water supply. Look, I've already done that, Campbell. It's Captain Campbell to you. There's enough food for three weeks. However, part of the water supply has been polluted. By what? That's what I was working on when you interrupted me. Will you let me know as soon as you find out? Yes, Captain, sir. I wish that jerk would let me alone. I brought you some food. Thanks. Did I say something wrong? Sorry, it's not you. Chicken pot pies? No, chicken pot pies. So what does this do? Well, oh, it's a heat sensing monitor. It shows where everyone is in the shuttle. See, this is where we are now in the control room. So how long till we get to Alpha 7? Oh, about five more days. How long till Earth? 18 months, according to Bernice. Who's Bernice? The computer, Roger's new sidekick. You know something, Sherry? You're one foxy lady. 
Really, I think I'm a little overweight. <laughs> Not to worry. When you start downing on a new K-20 rashes, you'll find that extra weight just feels right off. Oh, hi, Sherry. I didn't even notice you come in. I must have really been out of it. Now, that's a man with great devotion to his job. Food! Great! I'm starved. Haven't eaten over 12 hours. Thanks a lot. Believe you me, that's unusual for him. Glandular problems, you know. Oh, hey, Sherry. Would you do me a favor? Go back and have Billy call me. I think she's mad at me. She won't answer her intercom. Sure, I was gonna go bring her some food anyway, Roger. I mean, uh, Captain. Roger's fine. I'm not cut out for the news stuff anyway. Gee, I thought you were doing pretty good. Really? Ah, uh, I think I have another sandwich. You really think we're gonna be able to make it home? Hey, what is this? Let's show any tears. We're doing just fine. I'm I'm sorry, I really hey, don't mean look. to. There's a will, there's a way. Listen, pretty lady, we're not gonna let anything happen to you. You hear me? <laughs> Poor gal's really scared, isn't she? Yeah. I've seen it happen many times before. You can't stay up here too long. All that emptiness makes you crazy after a while. That's probably why they scheduled her for a leave. I'm starting to get real depressed myself. Here, sit. 
sit down. It's okay now. Just breathe deeply. Now tell me what happened. It's Billy. What about Billy? She, she's dead. <laughs> she's got slime. Slime? It's all over her. Hold still. I'm going to take a sample. So listen and listen carefully. Cherry's just come back from the engine room and is hysterical. As far as I can tell, something has happened to Lieutenant Lynn, and it has something to do with the slimy substance all over Sherry's pants. <laughs> we, we've always been a little suspicious of Billy's lesbian traits. <laughs> what? What did she do? I think she ripped out the intercom. How am I going to talk to her? Use emergency PA system. Good idea. Come on now. Talk to me, would you? I didn't mean it. Hey, Adrian, just kidding. Adrian, come on. Would you? We're just having a little fun. I, I didn't mean to do anything. Adrian, come on, man. What's the matter? Look, I'm going to input this chemical breakdown into the main computer for a source analysis. You'll be safe here as long as you keep that inner chamber door locked. Dr. Kimberly, I'm serious. I need you to talk to me right now. After I leave, you lock it. Do you hear me? Okay, I'll be right back. That's an order. Something's wrong. Damn you, Kimberly. Enough is enough. What's going on back there? I think I better go back there. Look what big heroes we have here. Now, can I get access to the main computer without you shooting me? Why won't this thing answer me? It's only programmed for my voice. Well, that's real smart. What if you got killed? Never thought of that. Well, just forget it. Just tell it to give me an answer. It's all right, Bernice. The following elements some are from some much. unknown life form. Its molecular structure does not require oxygen to live. Well, that's just great. Whatever that thing is, it's polluted half our water supply. Did you try to get in touch with Lieutenant Lynn? She wouldn't answer. Wait a minute. She's in the supply room. That's not Philip. How do you know? Whatever it is doesn't display the same temperature code as a human. And what the hell is that thing?
Sherry, did you lock that inner door? Here, try this. Sherry, this is Dr. Kimberly. Listen closely. Go over to the inner hatch door and manually lock it. I'm gonna open the outer hatch and suck that you thing into the bag! Man, he'll suffocate! It worked! <laughs> There's one light on. Quick, close the hatch door before he freezes to death.
that's not Kel's gun. to sleep out under the stars on a hot summer's night and wonder who lived on all those shining little stars. Did you ever used to wonder about things like that, Kelly? causing that? I don't know. Disconnect all terminals except the control room. Why do I get the feeling I did exactly what it wanted me to? It can't turn off our air supply. We can't turn it off in there either. So what are we going to do? got to find out more about this thing. I wish we could find the laser cards on that expedition.
How does this thing work? What, the video laser? Yeah. You push the blue button, why? Maybe they're in here. The laser cards? Yeah. <laughs> no way, they would have checked there first. Then what's that? I'll be damned. How many hours are on that tape? 25. 25? All right. Speed that thing up a little. What? Oh, yeah, good idea. Oh, SC-37, this is SC-45. What was that? Who could be in this sector? SC-37, this is uh, spacecraft 45 out of here. SC-37, come up on emergency frequency 135.85. Yes, SC-45, we read you. We have an emergency situation. Repeat, emergency situation. Unknown life form has killed three of the crew. Need assistance, repeat, need assistance. Uh, shuttlecraft uh, 37, uh, looks like your transmitter's out. We had the same problem after... SC-45, this is SC-37. Do you, you hear us? Something's jamming our outgoing signal. Your, uh, course to Alpha 7 looks the same as ours. Uh, looking at the split screen, uh... Well, uh, no major damage to the hull that I can see, uh, SC-37. Uh, that's, uh, uh... Should be good news anyway. Uh, tell you what, um, why don't we do this? If you're, uh, if everything's okay, why don't you give me a 30 degree right turn? That's a 30 degree right turn, SC 37. SC uh, 37, this is SC 45. If you're okay, I tell you what, give us a 30 degree right turn. Okay, looks good, SC-37. All right. Good to have you with us, SC-37. Tell you what, we'll keep in track with you about every few hours. Give you a call. And uh, have a good trip. Good night.
So when they brought it aboard, it was like a newborn baby that started to grow. And according to the test they ran on it, not only did it grow in size, but also in intelligence. In the two days before the accident, it went from barely being able to move to being able to find its way out of a maze that a nine-month-old chimp couldn't figure out. So there's just no knowing how intelligent that thing is now or when it's going to reach its adult potential. that thing is back in the engine room. It came from some kind of probe that crashed on Mars. And according to the soil samples, was buried for over 300,000 years. And according to the notes at the end of that tape, that crystal functions like some kind of extremely advanced computer. Evidently, the creature was able to activate it when it was confronted with a difficult problem. And that would explain where it's getting all the knowledge to operate our computer. So the crystal must still be on board. It may be a computer, but it's also some kind of power supply, strong enough to move that probe and to fry out all the circuits on this ship. Why would it want to do that? I don't think it did. The note said they were going to try a laser on that crystal. Even on a plenium crystal, that's risky. But on that thing, God knows what could have happened. SC-37, this is 45. You have an emergency situation. Repeat, emergency situation. Meteor storm at 12 o'clock. Take immediate and evasive action. Get the hell out of there, boys. Meteor storm at 12 o'clock. Take immediate... Bernice, how close is it? We have entered it. What happened? Bernice, what happened to the meteor storm? We are in the middle of it. Why aren't we being hit? There is a force field around us. Force field? There aren't any force fields in short distance shuttlecrafts, are there? Not that I know of. Bernice, where's the force field's point of origin? The engine room. Bernice. Are we through the meteor storm yet? We just came out of it. Give me a damage report. Minor damage to the outer hull. The power supply terminals to the engine room have been burned out. Thank you. 
Adrian, open the door. Adrian, can you hear me? Son of a bitch. He never touched me. And he turned the air back on. Listen, I brought some food back. delicacy. Campbell's tomato. Or how about tomato? Of course, there's always that favorite, Campbell's tomato tomato. Now, you're probably wondering if I'm related to the Campbell's of Campbell's soup. Actually, was my great 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 grandfather who founded the company back in the late 1800s. Unfortunately, he lost it all in a gambling game in the Badlands of South Dakota. I remember the night well. There was a cold wind blowing in from the north. And I said to him, You've been a good boy, Uncle. Evidently, our friend has figured out some way to fix those circuits. I check with Bernice, and we're back on course to Alpha 7. We should be there in another 24 hours. Access the computer. Matthew 7, verse 12. Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets.
tapped into our computer. Why can't we tap into his? How can we? Bernice, where'd you go? I was answering requests from Terminal 7. How soon until Alpha 7's deceleration? Speed brakes must be activated in 45 minutes. Can the speed brakes be activated from here? Negative. Retrofire must be initiated in engine room. After I leave, you lock this door, and you don't open it until you hear my voice. You understand?
What do you want? I need this ship. We need it too. What about the woman and I? What do you plan to do with us? I'll decide. Decide? What is there to decide? How are you going to kill us like you did your last three victims? You would have done the same. respect for life. You murdered three people. Knowledge comes from my crystal. Killing was non-existent until I encountered your kind. I killed in self-defense. Well, what about the girl Sherry? She didn't intend to harm you. Let us down now. We won't try to harm you again. said you needed the ship. Hours to Alpha 7. You may answer, Bernice. At current speed, 5 hours and 22 minutes. In order for us not to fly past Alpha 7, 
I'll need to reprogram the computer and take control of the engine from the command console. The control is yours. Then we're free to go. Yes. You will help us get on the other ship. Yes. How do we know you'll keep your word? You must believe me. And I'll believe you. I'll be in the control room. Couldn't you program the computer from here? Yes. Well, then why did you let him go do it? Humans must feel needed. It's called ego. Is that why you let him go do it? He does seem happier now. It's strange, but I feel that I can trust you. You can. Scar, I'm having trouble altering my course. You're gonna have to come up here and assist me. food for a while. You sure you can eat this stuff? This will be quite sufficient. Will there be enough for you and your crew? Oh yeah, sure, we got plenty. time to think about him until lately. I didn't understand. We all just didn't understand then. We can only afford to wait for one more day. Patience. Gar. Are you ever afraid? Yes. But the crystal helps me understand. Placed it yet. You released your hand. I did not. Why is he such a jerk? Captain. 
Captain. A gravity tunnel has opened in Sector 5, causing an orbital velocity change. SC-37 should now prepare to jettison from Alpha-7 within the next 24 minutes in order to intercept the next Earth orbital pass. Thank you. 
It's intermission time, folks, so hurry, hurry, hurry. Step right over to our refreshment center for the most extravagant array of refreshment goodies ever assembled under one roof. Enjoy breathtaking, mouth-watering goodies, everything from a snack to a delicious full meal. At our refreshment center, you'll find a large variety of goodies to satisfy your hunger, your thirst, or your sweet tooth. So hurry, hurry, hurry. Visit our refreshment center now. The show starts in five minutes. The show starts in four minutes. Show starts in three minutes. The show starts in two minutes. The show starts in one minute. with the show. Inside the house at 21 Shady Lane Avenue is a black and white TV with the power to turn itself on and come alive with the dead, the video dead. But for the new owners, their first warning may be too late. Why did you kill her? You don't know what you're messing with. Video Dead, a new form and shape for zombie terror that invades a neighborhood and threatens the innocent, the unsuspecting, and the unbelieving. Nothing can prepare you. Nothing can save you. Nothing can stop the onslaught of the Video Dead. It's the late show to end them all. Look what's buried inside your TV. The video dead. Somewhere deep inside. 
When you work in Hollywood, you learn fast that there's just two kinds of girls in a town like this. The sweet, shy, innocent ones. You know, the ones you want to take home to mom. And then there are the other kind. The ones you just want to take home. Sometimes they like to play a little rough, but then these aren't your average girls. And this isn't your average movie. If you haven't figured out by now, there's something for everybody. Well, almost everybody. There's action, romance, and a cast of thousands. It's Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers. These girls charge an arm and a leg. I think it's time somebody cut you down to size, Jack. Have you ever considered therapy? I'm going to enjoy splattering you. Hostile. Very hostile. Got a great set. Yeah, I know. Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers. It's a comedy that'll leave you in pieces.
Bridger. Dad, it's Susan. Just to remind you of the curriculum meeting at 2 o'clock, okay? Not okay. 12.20, the bell rings, and I'm out of here. Dad, it's a master's degree proposal. The vice rector's sitting in to observe. He's concerned. Tell him, number one, there's a major grant that depends on my showing up for this conference. And number two, when he arches his bushy eyebrows, which he will, remind him that he's the one who authorized my laughable travel expenses. Okay, everybody, seats. Let's do it. Problem with a magnetic field. If you got a wire like this, you won't have sufficient reverse polarity. Watch what I'm doing. into his synthesis, the growing together, the fusion of man and his capability, of his planet and his resources. Power over technology equals control of destiny. If man's going to control his future, he's got to learn to control his machinery. Now, George? So what are we supposed to use with that smelter out by Highway 10? I mean, the nitrate crud it belches. One step at a time. Patience, process, perseverance. Right. How you doing, Nat? Not bad, Phil. Yourself? Well, about the same. Mrs. Thorner? She ain't never gonna get over it. Only daughter we... Like I said on the phone, I'm flying down there. Uh, you said there was something. Well, there's a detective Mira sent this authorization. I already signed it. Maybe you'd ask that Mira fella just what happened. I thought it was a heart attack. 19 years old. I figure maybe it was something else. Maybe it was so bad they just didn't want to. I'll look into it, Phil. Promise. Sandra was a wonderful person. Maybe the best student I ever had. a man who has been a mentor and inspiration to a great number of us, Dr. Stanley Markowitz. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Ouroboros. In a very general sense, it symbolizes time and the continuity of life. More specifically, a primitive notion of self-sufficient nature. I'm calling on behalf of Mr. Phil Thorner. His daughter, Sandra. What's that name again? Thorner. Thorner? T H. T H O R N E R. Yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to see you about his daughter. The family asked me to collect her. Are you a relative? Well, I've got the letter of authorization with me. So you're 
but not a relative, right? But, uh, you see, sir, they've, they've countersigned the letter. It won't take yeah, a moment. Yeah, 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 gotcha. What do you want? According to her father, there's just a couple of suitcases. And the uh, family name is, uh... Thorner. Who signed the authorization? Her father, Phil Thorner. You're their lawyer? I mean, I'm a friend. Bridger, B.R. <laughs> Why don't I just bring this letter... Look, a report comes to me, I read it. That makes me informed. Now, everything I know, I've already told you. So if you've got anything else on your mind, you better make it fast. I don't like wasting time. Yeah, me too, but maybe you can understand what this did to her parents. They're friends of mine, and I'd, I'd like to tell them something. Look, cowboy, there ain't nothing else. They just felt a heart attack. She was kind of young for that. It happens. Medical report says was the probable cause of death. Probable meaning she wasn't raped, stabbed, shot, bludgeoned, strangled, or cut in little pieces. She died of a heart attack in the museum the subway station. Didn't anybody stop? I mean, to help her? Look, she died. That was it. Some old bag lady was there. Let's say she even tried to help her. Now, that ought to make her parents real happy, huh? Sure. What's your line, partner? Like you, pollution. Yeah? Well, for all I know, you could be some geek off the street who wants to make love to her shoes. You got some identification. I take it the attitude, the uh, wardrobe, the posture designed to let the public in on just who's in charge here. Well, it's a second-rate charade. Your style doesn't impress me. In fact, it sucks. This is Stanley Markowitz. I'm not available at the moment, but I'll be happy to return your call at the earliest opportunity. Please leave your name, telephone number, and leave a message. So approximately 45 seconds after you hear the beep tone. Stan, Charlie Kirshner at Morgan Brothers. Thought I'd fill you in on a few transactions we had today. You can reach him at the office around 10 tomorrow. I think he'll be pleased when you hear Hold it, Charlie. I just got in. I want to get this thing from the top. Just hold it set. Nat, just drop your things to the first room at the top of the stairs. Hello, Charlie. You're on the air. All good news, Dan. First off, I sold you a Domco at 25 and a quarter. Picked up 5,000 Kirkwood mines at 12 and three quarters. We rolled over the T-bills and BPR goes from 2 to 3 days to 11. And interchemic phosphates is really going to move. It's time to get in there and buy. Statistics are a little out of date, don't you think, Nat? Well, they substantiated my point, didn't they? What have you been doing for ten years, Nat? You were from the front rank of every march and demonstration. Where were you when Three Mile blew? Come on, Stanley. That a robber's thing today is one of your oldest numbers. And what's this, buying into notorious mining companies and eating carcinogenic pot pies? <laughs> Where are you? I'm inside the fence, influencing power. Me too. Yeah. Who are you kidding, Nat? Your influence is on kids who hang on your every word for three credits in the fall semester. Your influence is like your statistics. 
It's yesterday's news. However, I have never underestimated the quality of your influence. See, I haven't changed. I still separate the trash. Cans on the right. You got 25 cent, mister? You got for me or no? Uh, a girl died here about a month ago. Were you the one? One phone. Lightning. No, heart attack. Did you see... No uh... heart attack. She on phone. Born by lightning. You tease me? Like me. Thanks a lot. Nobody believe. There, you see. Thanks, lady. It's okay. Go look. Those chips, every last one of them. Hello? Mrs. Anderson? Yeah, that's right. Uh, is there somebody else on the phone? No. Marley, you put that down, you hear me? This is personal. She told you about the lightning and the telephone. That's right. Listen, nature boy. Any lightning she saw came out of a bottle. I did you a favor holding back on that fairy tale. Now go on back to your soybean patch and leave the police work to the grown-ups. That's a week Tuesday. Okay, thank you. Oh, have a seat, sir. May I help you? Well, it's nothing too serious. More a matter of service, really. Uh, mechanical or otherwise? Strictly mechanical. Repair. Uh, your home phone? Well, not exactly. It's a public telephone, a museum subway station. Thank you for letting us know. We'll have someone... It's already been repaired. I'm interested in knowing... why. Well, you might try a letter to our service people. Well, I thought I'd try in person, as you can see. 
Perhaps your supervisor could give me a hand. I'm afraid this really isn't the right department to answer your question. Then I would like to speak to your supervisor. I'm sorry, Mr... Bridger. And let's not make a big deal out of this. Uh, please, your supervisor. I'll be right back. R.T.? Ridley Taylor. Dollar says you don't make it past second base. A place like this, I'd want odds. Guy came in last week. I figured he was about a 10 to 1 shot. Then he pulled a gun out. Good thing I didn't bet. Dangerous work. It's the silent observers that kill you. Do you like it? Well, it's not right. It's not right. Well, it'll short out. Look, Ohm's law. Not enough resistance in the circuit for the amperage coming in off the yellow lead. That's not a lead, it's a line. There are yellow lines and red lines and circles, rectangles. But it won't work. Forget I mentioned it. Modrian, Clay, now Mr. they turn, turn me on. Detail without losing substance. You know what I mean? Mr. Bridger, Mr. Websell. John Websell, have a seat. What can I do for you, Mr. Bridger? I'm interested in a telephone repair at the museum subway station. In what way, exactly? Well, I don't know exactly. Uh, about a month ago, a young woman had a heart attack there. A witness suggested it might in some way be related to a telephone. I noticed that one of a series of public phones had been replaced. And, well, maybe the two are related. Uh, I don't know, a malfunction or something. That'd be impossible, of course. Of course. But maybe I could just find out why the phone was replaced. <laughs> I suspect it didn't work. Could we speak with someone in your service department? With all respect, Mr. Um... Bridger. With all respect, Mr. Bridger, and I'm not saying you environment people don't do a lot of good. It's just that, well, statistics show sometimes the do-gooder attitude arises in people who are, shall we say, basically paranoid. Anything else? Name of the repairman. I see. Well, maybe you've got a point. Why don't you have Miss Fremantle take down the particulars and whatnot, and uh, we'll get back to you at your hotel. Well, thanks for your time. Oh, Mr. Websell, uh, I didn't say what I did or even where I'm staying. Or did I? That concludes our tour. Any final questions? Yeah. How does a guy get a plush job like yours in a zoo like this? <laughs> Experience, primarily. An admiration for a complex industry and a willingness to communicate its strengths to a public that's curious enough to want to know. Ah. Do I get my dollar, Mr. Bridger? Yeah, I guess you do. Hey, if it hurts that much, forget it. You know what hurts? What really hurts is someone glorifying something she doesn't understand. What don't I understand? Ohm's law? No, that. Ah. You gonna tell me about it? I'd like to. So why don't you? Over dinner? Where? You know the ballroom, the Biltmore Hotel? There's a conference. What time? Nine. Okay.
Telephone service. This is Samuel. Yes, hello. Um, I'd like to report the theft to one of your telephone receivers, the southbound platform of the Museum Subway Station. Museum Station? That's right. I'll report it. Thank you. Well, you're sure welcome. We're very grateful, sir. Bye. Somebody really did a number. Clean as a whistle. Bolt cutters. Second one they zapped down here this month? Yeah. Bolt cutters again? No. Oh, hell, you wouldn't hardly believe it. Some turkey must have taken a flamethrower to the receiver. Just the receiver, huh? Yeah. There wasn't even a mark on the box there. Don't hardly make sense. Could it have been the voltage? Maybe some in the electroacoustic transducer. You some kind of phone freak? gym teacher, you know, basketball or phys ed. White shadow. <laughs> yeah, how about that? Maybe a voltage malfunction. Nah, there's only about 40 volts going through there when you tack them. About 100 when it actually rings. Never enough amps to melt them all. Melt them all? You mean it's happened more than once? Oh, yeah. You got a couple others down at the lab there. Like uh, some hot dog must have taken a look at his phone bill and uh, bought himself a blowtorch. <laughs> Hi, sorry about that. You don't know what it's like to be kept waiting. <laughs> hey, are you weird? Or... Pretty off the wall to me. I mean, a telephone killing people. If a red dye and a maraschino cherry can kill you, why not a telephone? You don't eat telephones. 
Besides, the police would know about something that wild, wouldn't they? Hmm. Oh, I forgot. You think that the police are part of the cover-up? And I forgot. You work for them. Must be a real pain in the ass going through life, thinking that there's a Watergate behind every closed door. It's worse when you find out there really is. Look, they want a mural. They give me free access to anything that I want. Photographs, diagrams, blueprints, tours of labs. It's all there for the asking. That sound like a conspiracy to you? I'll grab a cab. We could share it. Different directions. Telephone! Your hometown's tracked you down. Who? Your local chief of police. Accumulated parking tickets. Hi, Tom. What'd you find? This is Mira, Detective 69th Precinct. That's right. Got a hold of his record. Yeah. He's the son of a bitch involved in that Kaminsky case, you remember? That was Mira? Damn near cost him his job. Big investigation. You're kidding. So you gonna tangle with him? Yeah. Wanna hear more? Yeah. 32 indictments, 12 convictions. How many? 12. Kaminsky, that's the big one, a couple of years ago. What year? 78. I'll get back to you with more, okay? Oh, that's fantastic. Anytime. Just holler. Hey, thanks, Tom. You're a prince. Wait for my call. I'll do that. You take care of yourself. Thanks again. Take it easy, yeah? So long. Bringing the whole gang in on this one, huh? Local police, undergrad co-eds, maybe even the high school band. Just updating my research. Nothing wrong with that, so long as you can get published. Who knows? I do. This gumshoe routine is child's play. God damn it, Nat, you're an educator. Don't lose sight of your priorities. I've told you nothing but facts, Stanley. Least you can do is acknowledge that they don't add up. They don't fit into this cheap little paperback plot you're cooking up. These are responsible people you're talking about. You know him? I'm their environmental consultant. You really are inside the fence. Yes, Dad, and I've earned it. These people have funds that could give us a major breakthrough. If there was anything going on, I'd be the first to know about it. Wrong, Stanley. We're usually the last. Get rid of you, a stick, a spray, or a roll-on. Look, you son of a bitch, you're a public servant, not a stand-up comic. I've come to you for help. Bridger, if I was an L.A. cop, I'd shoot you right here in the elevator. Since I'm not, I'm gonna let you talk before I shoot you. One, I want you to call the coroner. Cardiac I... arrest is a result of acute respiratory failure. That's what the coroner report says. You know, some people got a memory for baseball statistics. Me, I memorize COD. Cause of death? And find out if those symptoms are consistent with electric shock. Two, I want you to get a rip. Subpoena the paperwork of the lineman who repaired the telephone at the museum station. Three, check through your jackets and see if there have been any similar deaths in the past couple of days. You're telling me that a telephone killed the girl? I'm leaning in that direction. Let me ask you one thing. In a city of four million people, how come you're the only one that thinks that? In a city of four million people, I'm the only one who's thought about it. June 1978, a man named Albert Kaminsky was murdered. In this whole city, only one man believed the killer was Deputy Mayor Stanton, one of the most popular city officials in history. You. Jesus. Where'd you dig that up? Politicians came down on here. The media, even your own department was totally outraged. But you hung in there, didn't you? 
20 years, 32 indictments, 12 convictions, single-handed, not bad. What's happened since then? You go on the take or do you just say to hell with it? Let the elevator go, Bridger. You're holding up traffic. The other one's on the fritz. Little information is all I need. Nobody will know where it came from. It's company property. You said it was there for the asking. I'm asking. You understood what I was offering. I knew what you were offering. What about the research section? Laboratories, that sort of thing. Upstairs. Some nice pictures. Hey, who the hell are you? Hey, talking? man. Who are you working for, huh? I'm just a tourist, man. You know, I'm just taking pictures. Son of a bitch. Hey, somebody call the cops. This guy's crazy. Call the cops. Who put you up to this, huh? Tell me. Hey! Tell me. Tell me. Next. Next. Stanley Markowitz, to the courtesy telephone, please. Markowitz. Stanley, they found you. Hello? Hey, don't hang up. I only get one call. Where are you now? The downtown police station, damn it. What? I'm under arrest, Stanley. What is the charge? They're still adding them up. Can you get me out? Of course I will. God, it's just like the old days. Now remember now. You don't have to tell them anything beyond your name. Some things you never forget. All right. You can't doubt it now, Stanley. They're covering up. Hey, try this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look, I'll talk to Fred Waits. Waits? Yeah, the president. Good man. I've known him for years. He'll talk off the record. There's no such animal as off the record. Besides, there's a better way to get inside. But you have in mind... We're going to take the tour. For God's sake, why? Patience, process, perseverance. Now, whoever taught me that? We are approaching the area where we can see into our system's control room. Satellite bounce, microwave relay, 
international communications time lag. All the calculations are made from this room. By the year 2000, there will be 1.4 trillion phones in the world, including cable, switches, long distance facilities. The cost will amount to approximately $1,000 per phone. That's what I call an industry. Now, this telephone system involves the use of half a million miles of conductive wire, enough to circle the globe 20 times. This is ESS, the Electronic Switching System. If necessary, it has the capacity to handle 100,000 calls per second. Naturally, we are computerizing and miniaturizing constantly. As our scientists develop new and more sophisticated systems, we can look forward to the day when this entire conflict can be housed in a space one fiftieth the area of its present requirement. When that occurs, we will be able to pass our Nat. operating This is where I get off. What? Fishing expedition. Nat, you can't. If anybody comes after me, give them a little of your bullshitizing, will you? Can't do do what you do best. Uh, sir, I'm afraid you must stay with the tour. I'm sorry, sir, but these are restricted areas. I am aware of that. My name is Stanley Markowitz. I'm with the company. Could I see your clearance pass? You don't understand. Senior consultant, environment. But you don't have a pass. Would you call Fred Waits on the 16th? Floor. I know where the executive offices then are located. speak to him. He'll explain to you who I am. Once the tour is finished, I'm sure we'll be able to follow the proper procedures. But while you're on my tour, I'm responsible. Wasn't there another gentleman? With me? No. Should we carry on? Send a thing like that down the line? You from the recall lab? Uh, no, just visiting. Yeah? Where from? Uh, up north, printing microprocessor chips, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. What do you think? <laughs> Boys in the recall lab want to know, too. That's why I thought, uh... Anyway, sure, yeah. Use the receiver as a capacitor. Store up the voltage input to the point of spontaneous discharge and, uh... Sounds simple. Not really, no. You working on it or something? Uh, sort of, yeah. Where'd you say the recall lab was? Sub basement, A360. Thanks. Epsilon PR, will you? Now, this space houses our power monitor. It was designed and built by our cybernetics branch in 1977 at a cost of $450 million.
um, no, not here. Right there, Bridger. Some guy broke into the recall lab. What guy? Some environmental snoop. She was coerced, Wetzel. She's not responsible. All right, that's it. Let's go. Go home, Mr. Bridger. The law protects us from people like you. Yeah? And just what the hell protects the people from people like you? I've seen the telephones, Wetzel. You know I know. I don't know about any telephones, Bridger. And what you know gets you less than bus fare. Don't let them fool you, R.T. They're scared. <laughs> They're scared. They run the world, and they're scared of what? Of you? Tough nap Bridger? What are you doing? I'm taking you up on your offer. You gonna fight him? Win? Stanley Markowitz. Stanley, I've been talking to that goddamn answering machine of yours. What did you see? Poor phones. All melted down by some kind of sound electrical charge. Stanley, we gotta, we gotta go public with this thing. Absolutely not. I'm gonna confront weights with it, see where they are, force them to move on it themselves. Stanley, you're stalling. We're up to solutions, Nat, not prizes. I'll call you. How long? I'll try to call him tonight. Be there? Uh. Yeah. What we see here is a slide of the Mediterranean Sea. Now, there was a time when this was. <laughs> Yes? Um, Fred Waits. Fred, we've got trouble. Bridger has seen the phones. I know that. The question is, what are you doing about it? He wants to go to the mass media. You've been paid to contain him. Look, all right. You said that if you had enough lead time, your people could solve the problem. What we do and how we do it is our business. Ever since that student of his died, you said he might be trouble. That, we agreed, was your business. Now, what the hell are you going to do about it? Look, he is out of control. 
He knows I'm talking to you. He's going to want an answer. So give him answers, Markowitz. Get him the hell back on track. Hello? Dr. Markowitz? Yes? Markowitz, you had your chance to control your environment. Now I found a way of controlling mine. You're getting too close. Close to what? I don't know. Where... Yeah, just a sec. Stan? Markowitz is dead, Bridger. Beat your ass down the station. Yeah, Jesus, what happened? Lightning. Goddamn lightning. My office, right away. Get out of here! Tamlin! Where the hell is Tamlin? Here, sir. I uh, already heard you were looking Cut for me. Cut that out. See Felrath and get hold of the map. Of the there you are, sir. Bridger. Red's where they lived. Yellow's where they worked. The way we figure it, nobody bought it between nine and five, so our killer's got to pick a victim by day, knock him off at night. Maybe he works downtown, spends some kind of a weird lunch hour. Markowitz worked around here, too. Thought he was some kind of a college professor. He was a consultant at the telephone company. Interesting. Let's move him. Makes it neat. That's a double, sir. What? The phone company. That other guy. The one after the subway. That's where he got it. Last night, Markowitz was going to call Waits, the president, and talk to him about all this. Waits. OK. Let's go right to the top. You want an apology? I just want the son of a bitch who did it. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> Mr. Waits, please. Uh, my name is Mara. This is Mr. Bridget. Is he expecting you? His wife's been in a car accident. Mrs. Waits? Yep. Cut her nearly right in half. <gasps> oh, God! Come with me. Just hate wasting time. I'm sorry, Mr. Waits, but could you... Uh, they're from the police, Mr. Waits. I'm so sorry. Commissioner sent you? You talked to Stanley Markowitz last night. I explained everything to the commissioner. What did you explain? Now, that's not your concern. It sure as hell is. If a telephone can be a lethal weapon, Just exactly who are you? We are the forces of goodness and mercy, Mr. Waits. I am Mara, he is Bridger. Yes, I know the name. Then you know what I've seen. A few telephones under repair. To hell with him. Let's go to the media. You really think that's a responsible thing to do? Create mass hysteria, get us shut down. Do you realize what that would mean? About two dozen people would die every 60 seconds because they couldn't contact a doctor, a policeman, a fireman. Quite a price to pay just to stop one single madman.
You had any ransom demands? No. Malcontents, weirdos. It's all being looked after by the brightest and best at every level. Yeah, every level except police. The commissioner is being kept fully informed. Now, please, if you don't mind. I do mind, wait. I mind the smug attitude where you dictate information to the law. That says you're above the law. I'd better have a talk with my man down at the commissioner's office. You got an inside track? Yeah. Jack Gilsdorf, assistant commissioner. I got him in training, helping him get the right attitudes. I'll get back to you. Okay. I want you to take a little trip, visit some of those sensitive relatives of yours. Just a couple days. Are you kidding? Give up show business? Listen, Ridley, Stanley hit somebody's nerve and got his head blown off. I gotta be close to the same nerve. That could put you in real danger. Look, I'm not going. That's settled. Now, how do I get a hold of you if something happens? I'll call you. Ring once, hang up, and then ring again, okay? Okay. What are you gonna do? He had the closing address tomorrow. I want to give him one last hurrah. This system has a 43.6% self-sufficient Taylor? Oh, hi, Noah. Miss Taylor, I'm sorry about your mural. Uh, you have a real talent. Thanks, that's nice. Is your friend here for the big symposium? Taxi! Oh, Nat Bridger, yes. He was on my tour. He seems like a very bright man. Oh, yes. In fact, he's going to be the closing speaker tomorrow. Good for him. Bye, Noah. 737 Waterloo, please.
RT, I've got the voice, and I think I recognize it from someplace, but, uh... Oh, son of a bitch. Have you got a tape recorder there, a, a cassette player? Because you know who I know in this town, and it sounds familiar to me, so this first part is with Waits. Friend, we've got trouble. Bridger has seen the phone. I know that. The question is, what are you doing about it? He wants to go to the mass media. You've been paid to contain it. Look, all right. He knew all the time. You said yeah. you have broken me. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Listen to the second part. Yes. You had your chance to control your environment. I found a way controlling mine. You're getting too close. Oh, I told him. Not that was Clayton. That's Noah Clayton, the tour guide. I told him where to find you. Detectives. Mira, please. If Detective Mira is not available, could I have him return your call when he comes in? Tell him Nat Bridger called. He can get me at 555... 4320. 4320. It's urgent. Delroy Drive. What? It's right there. Noah Clayton. 108 Delroy Drive. Delroy Drive. Wait. I'm coming with you. No, you hang on here. Look, somebody's got to tell Mira about this. Keep calling him or be here when he calls. Okay. Nat, hmm? don't do anything stupid. Hey, I got a PhD. <laughs> Mira? Ridley Taylor? Clayton. Fast, Bridger. I like your style. RT, you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah? Bridger. Jack Gilsdorf, Assistant Police Commissioner. Pulled a few strings for me on that Kaminsky thing. Well, pleased to meet you. A couple of my men just missed you at Clayton's. Of course, we had checked his employment records. They all show the Delroy address. Have you heard the tape? Positive. What do we do now? I want to find out for myself the extent of this thing. You know, get a handle on who's involved. And we know just the guy that can tell you. Talk to the commissioner. This is Mr. Gilsdorf. He's here to represent the commissioner's office. Right, Mr. Gilsdorf? That's right. 
This is now an official police matter. And you can forget about any previous understanding. Clayton hit Stanley because he was moving in on him. If he's convinced he got Ridley, that leaves only me, and he knows where I'm going to be tomorrow morning. Are you set up to, to trace if he calls? Tracing's a myth, Bridger. ESS the size of ours could take five, maybe six minutes. I'll keep him on the line if he calls. What if you can't? He was on the line all of six seconds with me. You know anything about electrical flashback? Of course. We've got couplers hooked into the system to guard against uh, vaporizing the ESS. Exactly. But if Clayton hasn't bothered to install couplers on his system, then we can redirect sound and voltage back to the point of origin. Nice to see all those years behind books paid off. You want the voltage coils down there yet? Of course I want them down there. How much time do you think we got? All aboard. Odds are the call will come through on the main number, sometime just 410. Uh, from a local exchange? Yeah, I'd say you're looking at a four-digit trace. Well, this is going to take some time. God damn it, I started as a lineman. I know how long it's going to take. One moment, please. I'll connect you right away. Built more. Hold the line, please. Room 212 isn't answering, sir. Would you care to leave a message? Built more. Yes, sir, I'll connect you right away. Damn. Now, what do you got in the way of a capacitor bank for 20,000 volts? <sighs> Mark's generator should do it. You got it? I'll get it. Did you isolate a room? This way. Hey, Joe. Yeah. Come in up here, Dykes, over there, will you? Gotta keep him talking long enough to trace the call. Then maybe the guys down the hall can reverse the power. Maybe. A man who reflects that inspiration with an intelligence and an intensity that is entirely his own. Dr. Nat Bridger. Anything? Nothing yet. Gentlemen, the world is going to die unless we turn around and fight. We've got to become noisy, radical, and insubordinate. Now, I know what I'm going to do about it. So what the hell, Stanley Markowitz would have wanted me to ask, are you going to do about it? Biltmore. Mr. Nat Bridger, please. Ecological Symposium. Incoming. Incoming. Damn. Acceptable casualty levels? Acceptable to whom? To working men and women? To our, our children? To our children's children? Mankind's destiny is not to become bother for his own technology. Let's go. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Paging him in the ballroom, sir. I'll put you through in just a moment. I'll take the call. No go. Why not? It's what I get paid for. 
Clayton won't know the difference. He hasn't heard your voice. Yeah, nobody has for too damn long. Thanks anyway, Mary. First digit, seven. Log on seven. Seven, first digit. speak to Nat Bridger. This is Bridger. Now listen, Clayton. You're a brilliant man, Clayton. But you've got to let us help you. You damn fool. I'm helping you. I'm helping you get rid of the world's real garbage. Lock on three, second digit. Lock on three, second digit. who treat integrity like dirt, who denies our dignity. Was Sandra Thorner one of those people? Subway station. That was a test. I didn't even know her name. She was an innocent human being, goddammit. And so is Ridley Taylor. Lock on nine. Third digit. Clayton, listen to me. You've, you've lost track of the enemy. You can't tell the innocent from the guilty. Fiber optics was mine, Bridger. They stole my vision. They stole everything. House, wife, children. They destroyed my life. You've got to stop now. You've got to let us help you. You don't care about people like me. Nobody does. You're stalling for time. You're trying to trace this call. Well, time is up, Bridger. <laughs> Sir? Thank you, sir. Uh, we'd like to uh, bury this incident, Roger. If it can be done once, well, you understand the rules of the game. Only rule I know is publish or perish. I'd like my mural put back. Well, that could be arranged. A few changes I'd like to make. Artist's prerogative. A couple of angles I hadn't thought about before. Miss Taylor, there's nothing that you can paint or Bridger can publish which could be harmful to us for very long. You believe him? I'd be out of work if I did. Nat. Dr. Nat Bridger, please come to the green telephone. Dr. Nat Bridger to the green <laughs> telephone, please. Bridger. 
This is Al Hisla. I'm with the Public Safety Department of the city. I heard what you did today. Great job. Thank you. Look, Bridger, I have some people who would like to see you. Might have a slot for you. I don't fill slots anymore, Mr. Hessel. There's about a dozen issues waiting for me back home. I'm only asking for a moment of your time. I know you care as much about the environment as I do. Just listen to me. Kemp, excuse me. I never will show a bet. I'll call you. <laughs> And now, folks, it's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night.